Yo, what's good? This is Tahoe TV, and I'm about to vent. Yeah, have you, um, shout out to Rob. Did, have you ever heard his, uh, his description of you before that you started doing this? Nah, what he said. He said he's proud of you first, though. <laughs> but he said, yo, Tahoe was a knucklehead. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah, so probably almost, we almost got beat, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. said before. Ryo, he's, yeah, Ryo was, yeah. Ryo was a little slick little nigga. <laughs> but we always knew he was a, you know, he was just a studio nigga. But yeah, he mm. took one of my artists. One time, me and, me and another nigga wound up backing each other down over the artist. Mm. Yeah, Dubs Dollar. Facts, oh, yeah. Oh, so, um, what was, um, for you, what was, um, like, your adult life before, um, the podcast and Twitter and stuff like that? Um... What are we talking about? Streets and shit? Or we too? Like, um, just in general, so what you basically, was also, at some point, at some point, I don't know if you really want to go into all of that because mm -hmm. that was a whole different lifestyle for me back then. And I don't really like glorifying that. I do want to say that I think I felt like I was hustling because I needed to figure out who I was. And, and the niggas around me loved me. Mm -hmm. My dad ain't really wasn't around. You know what I'm saying? I remember my dad came around me one day. He picked me up every month. Mm -hmm. But then one day he came around me and was like, I got married last week. Mm -hmm. And I was like hurt because he was my dad. And I was like, how do you, I don't even know who you, what do you mean? Mm. And you live with somebody. Mm. And so now I kind of, he picked me up to go over there and, and his kids, his other, her kids got a room and shit. I live with my mother mm -hmm. in her, in my mother's room, in my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of had a real resentment towards him for, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not being in my life, but having his own having another family. family that you ain't even think to invite me to the wedding. I was like that. Add on, I'm your only child. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that shit really, to this day, that shit still bothers me. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if you could tell. So these me. are like his stepkids? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I would steal from them all. I would be <laughs> I stole all this shit. <laughs> they used to pat me down when I was little. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious. They used to pat me. Not the kids, because the kids were scared. Yeah. <laughs> they would go tell them, like, yo, I think he got out. <laughs> <laughs> and he come over and go, yo, you got the toy? You grab the toy and he take mm -hmm. me home. You gotta stop that shit. I'll be like, mm. but um basically what I'm trying to say is as I grew older, the the yearning for male, whatever it means, something to compare yourself to, something to learn from. Mm -hmm. You don't as a boy, you don't get rid of that. You find it somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I found it in the streets and, mm -hmm. and I don't ever think I was really, really a street nigga. I always felt out of place because hmm. everybody grew up together. Mm -hmm. Niggas that ain't have no crib would live together and their moms could be eight of them niggas and they just ate together. You know, mm -hmm. whatever they had and they would steal electricity if they had to. I was always able to go home to my moms. My mm -hmm. moms always had a crib. So even when I became a street nigga, I never really feel like I was a street nigga. I, never, I think I, I got in the character very well. Mm -hmm. um, just whatever. But when I got arrested and went to jail, just saying, I just was like, yo, I'm throwing my life away out here. And there's several reasons for that. I went to trial for 10 minutes or whatever. So it was just like, what am I doing? You going too hard. You really want to give your life away to these niggas? These niggas don't care that you in here. Mm. Niggas care that you in there for about three weeks after you've gone. And after that, they don't talk about you no more. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Niggas don't send you no money. I remember you, you, your girl go around and looking for you, trying to get money from niggas. Niggas like, yo, here, get $20. $20? Mm. Nigga, I do bricks for you niggas. Mm -hmm. $20, you know what I mean? Then after a while, they ain't got it. Oh, I ain't got it. I got you, but I got you, sis. Mm -hmm. So after a while, you know, when I was up north, I just wanted to change my life. I knew that I was better. I knew that I was better. I knew that I was great in some way. Mm -hmm. So when I came home, I moved. Before I came home, I moved to the Bronx. God bless you if you moved to the Bronx. <laughs> but I started looking for uh, jobs and shit. Mm -hmm. And I just knew how to change clothes. I knew how to change, what do they call it? Code change, code, code switch. switch. Uh -huh. I knew how to code switch. So, you know, I would walk in, I talk like this on the outside, but inside I walk in and be like, Good morning, um, just wondering if my name is, you know, such and such. Um, if you have any openings here, and, you know, I'm willing to work. I work very hard and very diligent. So I knew how to do that. And it was got it me an adjustment period? From nah. like, from work, from the streets to the work? I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna keep real with you, bro. I was always able to play any room I, I walk into. Uh -huh. Um, I remember one time I had robbed somebody and I guess they caught me on camera or something, but I wound up, you know, my house has the shutters that you could just close, mm -hmm. right? So I'm in there with the shutters closed one day and somebody come knock on the door and like, yo, police, we just went to your car. 
Cause I we, we used to do um I used to like take off my license plate and do shootouts and shit um drive-bys and shit like that too. So um I don't know what what it was or well, I would check cash in places. I don't know what it was. Really. So they went to my my car, police, and then they came in my yard and was in my window with the flashlights. Mm. You, know, you in your crib, the shutters closed. You you ain't thinking about yeah, it. You don't yeah, see it, right? You yeah. don't have ring cameras back then. And so what I did, I got like a piece of board, and I just boarded behind the shutters. Mm. So you will never know if the lights is on or nothing. You mm. it looked like this shit is abandoned in this motherfucker. But I just stayed in the crib for that long. But after a while, I was just sitting there like, yo, you just trapped yourself in the crib. You in jail, nigga? Like, what you gonna do? <laughs> house arrest. You know, house arrest. Yeah. You never gonna go outside? Yeah. So what I did, I said, yo, let's just go to the village one day. So you remember the atrium? Mm. I wound up going um, to the village. It was like eight of us. Mm. And he was walking through, doing whatever he was doing, wilding. Um, and I went to the atrium. And I looked around. I'd never seen nothing like this shit before. It was an amazing store, bro. They had the DJ up by the ceiling. Mm. And the clothes crazy. It just felt like hip hop. It just mm. felt like fly. And I you was getting a pellet? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> This shit was dope. Yeah. So they had clothes on. I, I know mm. was around, but I never seen them nowhere before. But you know, at DK and Wadi, Iceberg. Yeah, Iceberg. <laughs> yeah, iceberg shit. Ice, yeah, that's what they had. Iceberg and shit in there. Mm. You're like, damn, this shit hard. Mm. So um, I went to one of the girls in there. And I was like, yo, how you got a job here? Like, mm. she was like, you know, cutie, whatever. Mm. She was like, yo, they're hiring, but you can't, you ain't, don't even go up to them looking like this. You gotta get dressed. So. Mm. I went to one of the stations in there. I bought one of DK and Y. It's like royal blue slash purple, royal blue button up. Mm. Bought some DK and Y slacks, which bought some shoes. Went home, cut all my hair off. Mm. Baldy, cut all, whatever hair I had on my face. I don't think I had hair on my face back then, but I clean. Mm. And went back and asked for the manager. He hired me that day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yo, y'all know what it is. This is Tahoe. I just vented, you know what I mean? I had to get some shit off my chest. Be sure to like. Comment and subscribe, you know what I'm saying? We need to hear from you. All right?